Welcome to Rauta. This video is done in commercial collaboration with our sponsor Steelfest. True Metal Hails from Switzerland. This time we have a band called Turnfall with Dialectic of Ego and the Unconscious. And uh, before you say it, yeah, it looks like some traditional black metal cover. I mean, think about some Sacramentum or Dissection and Emperor and you have all the color escape here. You have the white logo, you have black, blue, a little bit white on the cover. Everything is like, okay, this is definitely going to be the next, I don't know, uh, in the night side eclipse or storm of the lights band and all that stuff. So definitely this is something that the band or the label has been throughout like pondering how we make this look like one of those classic black metal ones and uh, probably uh, lure in some customers to buy it. But make no mistake, Metal Archives lists this one as melodic black metal band itself describes them as blackened death metal and in my opinion the band's own definition is definitely closer to uh, the style here within. I would say this is technically speaking neither one but definitely more on the melodic albeit some uh, blackened kind of death metal and there's even a one band name which I'm just gonna drop while we move here on to metal archives. So melodic black metal or black and dead metal. Well, let's give uh, metal archives this uh, benefit of doubt kind of a thing, similar to it, but not exactly that. And that's it. This uh, genre definition here might be based on the previous albums, not so much so much with the third album we have here in question from year 2022. So this might be just a little bit outdated information, but it also might be somebody who has decided this is some kind of a melodic black metal because there are hints to it. So let's not focus on that, but instead go with the similar artist tab. Now this might give you a couple of uh, familiar names, mostly Ammonamoth and Dijekson. Now my first, my initial idea when I was listening to this was, this is Ammonamoth done in a Swiss ways. Dissection, not so much, but like I said, that could be more about the previous releases. Those other two names I don't dare to touch, I'm not too familiar with them, so let it slide. So Dialectic of Ego, blah blah blah, in my opinion is much like Swedish, uh, Swedish, Swiss take of Swedish band. That is of Viking metal done in uh, kind of a melodic death metal. Now Amonomod is known for heavy growly vocals and that is one of the reasons why they are boxed in the death metal department even if their riffs might not be exactly your typical death metal ones. I mean it, come on it's melodic metal but with death metal presence. Is there anything really to hint you about black metal melodic otherwise? Not really. I mean Technically speaking, if you go all the back to 1990s, when melodic metal, also known some places as melodic death metal, talking about the Inflames, Dark Tranquility, Ammonomoth, the early years especially, they are very close to what bands like Sacramentum and Dissection were doing. And as such, for example, Dissection was often labeled as black death metal, melodic kind. And of course, Sacramentum is the same thing. Now, this is worth mentioning because by the time these bands just go black metal and death metal. You kind of figured out they were both melodic. Some just had more pentagrams and Satan topics and anti-Christianity and some went just different direction. And then there are bands like Amonomad in the middle which are not like we're not really neither one. We're not that melodic metal, the type of In Flames and Dark Triangle or whatever they're doing, nor exactly the kind of a melodic black metal. So there you have the kind of a death metal which is at the same time melodic but not exactly melodic metal. You get it? much like later era hypocrisy. So that is where Thirubfar is more like, hey, we're gonna join that group three. And that is not the melodic metal, nor the melodic black metal. This is clear and defining thing. You are free to agree, but if you just know a little bit 1990s history, we're pretty much able to grasp the idea here. 
and Tirfar is doing that style of Amanamoth quite nicely. However, they don't have the strong growly vocals, nor they have the strong production of a big label band, nor unfortunately they don't have as strong songwriting. This is not to say the band is bad, meaningless, mediocrity and all that stuff, but it lingers somewhere between the rather decent ones and the lukewarm ones. So let me put it other ways. Some parts stream for is basically a lukewarm thing with the third album. A lot of these riffs are just like, yeah, 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 very basic, six out of ten stuff. It's not gonna leave and leave a mark, make a big impact, cause waves, etc. On the other hand, there are melodies when they're like, yeah, this is actually pretty good damn uh, good Amonimoth copycat band. I'm not saying it's a full copycat band, but you get the idea. It's so close to it that it's gonna be bound to be compared to that because of the melodic style, because of the overall feeling. So it doesn't matter how much blue, black, white combo they have been using on the cover, it doesn't really have anything to do with bands like Sacramentum, Dissection, and Emperor and the like. Well, maybe a little bit but more on the Amanomad side. Just remove Vikings and replace it with something else and you're pretty much on the map what Thurm Fire is all about. Now how much you're going to like this album depends on your love of Amanomad. If you're a big fan of the early albums especially, that doesn't really tell how much you have love for Thurm Fire. If you're a fan of also, or maybe mostly about the later albums, maybe then Thurm Fire will be very, very much on your listen to list. I'm on the verge. On the other hand, I really like Old Amon Amonamoth a lot. I mean, it, it's almost like a guilty pleasure thing, except I don't feel guilty about liking melodic death metal with Viking themes. Uh, but later era when Amonamoth started to slide into less captivating territory, and that's where Thurmfar hops in, it's not my favorite era. And that's my problem with Thurmfar also. The thing here is, they're kind of good at what they do, but the style that is happening is not exactly the stuff that I'm too thrilled about it. So I guess what I'm trying to say here, I'm guessing and I'm trying and all that stuff, is that it depends what kind of a soft spot you have for this kind of melodic metal. So it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about black and death metal or melodic black metal or melodic metal, melodic death metal. You need to understand if you don't like this kind of melodic extreme metal in the first place. I don't think Term Far has much to offer. Then again, if you're a sucker for this kind of, uh, you know, melodic approach to extreme metal, almost like semi-extreme, uh, uh, then you might actually like this album quite a lot. In my opinion, the band is still in work of progress kind of a phase. And third album is often said to be the, the hard one, the, where the band actually, you know, decides which direction to go next, next. So this might be indeed a crossroads thing. I don't know, I'm not a fortune teller, so I don't know where the band is going after this one. But if they keep honing and pushing, polishing this kind of stuff, having more powerful production and even more catchy melodies, I think they really could be the next Amanamoth kind of a success band. We'll see, I guess. But meanwhile, you will find links provided to the music, so go check it out. In my opinion, it's totally worth listening to. Maybe not so much praising, but that is of course up to each individual. In my books, this is rather okay and release, but a good one, sadly not. Well, there you have it. Take it with my criticism or not, but give it a go. You will find links. Bye-bye.